Hello, little hobbit, boy, I sure heard a bunch about you. I should hope so, Gandalf. You've known me all my life. See, I was a good friend of your dad's. We were in that Hanor pit of hell together for over five years. Well, five years is a long time to spend in a pit of any sort. Never mind a pit of hell. Hopefully, you'll never have to experience this yourself. But, when two men are in a situation together like me and your dad were, you take on certain responsibilities of the other. Please don't tell me you were lovers. If it had been me who had not made it, Major Coolidge would be talking right now to my son Jim. Major Coolidge would be a good name for an air conditioner. But the way it turned out is, I'm talking to you, Butch. My name is Frodo, Gandalf. And I think you've got the wrong script. I got something for you. I get that a lot from old guys in bars. This watch I got here was first purchased by your great-grandfather during the First World War. It was bought in a little store in Knoxville, Tennessee, made by the first company to ever make wristwatches. Up until then, people just carried pocket watches. You do realize we're in Hobbit Tin, right? There are no wristwatches in Middle Earth. It was bought by Private Dillboy Ryan Coolidge the day he set sail for Paris. This was your great-grandfather's war watch. And he wore it every day he was in the war. Shouldn't you be explaining to me about a ring of power? or something. You've got the wrong piece of Julie as well as the wrong script. And when he had done his duty, he went home to your great-grandmother, took the watch, and put it in an old coffee can. Fascinating. What did he do next? Take a nice long dump. Then next maybe he read the newspaper. Why don't you tell me about all the times he took a nice warm bath while you're at it? And in that can it stayed, until your granddad, Dane Coolidge, was called on by his country to go overseas and fight the Germans once again. This time they called it World War II. World War II where? That pit of hell you mentioned? Your great-grandfather gave this watch to your granddad for good luck. I should think the key to a shack in the wilderness would have been luckier. Unfortunately, Dane's luck wasn't as good as his old man's. Dane was a Marine, and he was killed with all the other Marines at the Battle of Wake Island. Wake Island? What a droll name. Is it next to burial at all? Fine. Go on. Your grandfather was facing death, and he knew it. None of those boys had any illusions about ever leaving that island alive. So three days before the Japanese took the island, your grandfather asked a gunner on an air transport, named Winaki, a man he had never met before in his life, to deliver to his infant son, who he had never seen in the flesh his gold watch. I think I'm recalling the rest of how this goes. Three days later your granddad was dead, but Winaki kept his word. After the war was over, he paid a visit to your grandmother, delivering to your infant father, his dad's gold watch. This watch. This watch was on your daddy's wrist when he was shot down over Hanoi. He was captured and put in a Vietnamese prison camp. He knew that if the Gooks ever saw the watch, it would be confiscated taken away. Really, you don't need to finish now. The way your dad looked at it, this watch was your birthright. He be damned if any slopes were gonna put their greasy yellow hands on his boy's birthright. But apparently he was okay with having me circumcised. So he hid it in the one place he knew he could hide something. His ass? Oh. Dude. E -e 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 -e. That's just nasty. Five long years he wore this watch up his ass? Then he died of dysentery. He gave me the watch. I hid this uncomfortable hunk of metal up my ass for two years. And then, after seven years, I was sent home to my family. And now, little hobbit, I give the watch to you.